of your word through song, oh God, for the ministry of your presence through your spirit upon our lives this morning, this morning, this morning, Lord. We thank you for such grace. We thank you for such favor. We thank you for such honor. For you honor those who seek after you, oh God. You honor those who give all their hearts the whole being unto you, mighty God. You are gracious to your people when we acknowledge you, God, because worship, praise that we offer in this place is all about worshiping you, it's all about acknowledging you and your power and your presence. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the presence of your sweet spirit. In Jesus' name, we bless your name. Amen. Greetings in Jesus' name, and thank you so much for joining us today. We've compiled a special message from Pastor Tando Melane, recorded in Destined for Greatness Ministry in Cape Town, South Africa. We trust that you will be blessed. It's either you obey or you don't obey. There's no gray area. It's straight. It's either you obey or you don't obey. And both parts of this, this, this path, they have consequences. As you obey, there are things that God promises and are certain in his word. And also, if you don't obey, the opposite of, of, of not obeying is disobedience, isn't it? So the Bible is also clear about the consequences of disobedience. But the word of the Lord puts these things to us so that we may know that we serve a God who clarifies things to us so that we are aware as to what he requires of us. And ultimately, when the day of judgment comes, you would have known what he expected. And in terms of what he requires, and when you do that which he requires, the clear consequences. When you don't do what he requires, there are also consequences. He's just a fair God like that. Hallelujah. So this is... The, the topic or the title of my message this morning, that obedience is bliss. But commonly or popularly we would hear when people actually uh, 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 quote the scripture, that they, they, they would say, obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. So uh, with me as I pondered about this matter, um, I just came to a point to say, you know, obedience is bliss. You know, it's just awesome to actually obey the Lord. 
there is nothing impossible in obeying God. There's nothing difficult in being able to obey God. And that's the path that I am choosing because God has spoken so clear to me, but also not just for myself, but for us as a church. And that's why this morning I'm coming to share that with, with us as a church, with all of you, and together with myself as a church, because we are one body before the Lord. Amen. And therefore, there are specific things that God wants us to know and understand when it comes to obedience as a church. And the minute we start doing that He wants us to do, there are things that God has in store, and not just things, actual blessings, actual promises that He has in store for us when we start to obey. Amen. Hallelujah. Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing, child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. This is where God, after he created man uh, and woman, he gave them clear instruction. And in this verse, the Lord says, but the Lord gave, but the Lord gave the man this warning. You may eat any fruit in the garden except fruit from the tree of conscience. For its fruit will open your eyes to make you aware of right and wrong, good and bad. If you eat its fruit, you will be doomed to die. Amen. Barcelona, we serve a God who, as I thought about this, that in the creation or even before creation, God had a, had a picture of what he wants to have as in a relationship with mankind. He had a, 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 a vision or he envisioned and, 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 and anticipated a specific type of a relationship between himself and mankind. Amen. And, 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 and as we know, the Bible says, after God created the animals, he created the plants, he created everything else. He saw that there's something that is not complete. There's something missing in his creation. And there he then said, let us create man in what? In our own image, in our own likeness. And, 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 and the, the process of creating mankind started. And the kind of relationship, therefore, that God was to have with men was, diff was to be different from the kind of a relationship that God would have with everything else that he created. Because it's only when he, he, he had to come to a point of the creation of mankind, he said, let us create men in what? In our own image. So that took or explains that there is something special about the creation of a mankind. And therefore, in summary, what I came to understand as we read the scriptures, the kind of a relationship that God anticipated between himself and mankind was a relationship that's based on love. Amen. Isn't it that you don't create anything, you don't you know, invest your efforts, your wealth, your time in things that you don't like, in things that don't represent you, in things that, you know, don't reflect you uh, or, or say something good about you. So the same happened with God. He decided to invest in a creation, a type of creation called mankind in his own image. And that's because he loved the mankind. He anticipated, therefore, to have a loving relationship with mankind. He anticipated to have a faithful relationship with mankind. He anticipated to have a relationship of peace, of, of, of bliss, of eternal life for that matter with mankind. Because 
that's the, the, the essence of what was in God's mind that I'm not just creating mankind for, 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 for the earth just to occupy the earth and that's it and they die but actually I'm creating them to have eternal life so that mankind may exist with me through eternity amen the thought of that one day I would want I would want to get married three things that came to my mind when I thought about that one I thought about a man who will love me a man whom I will love a man who respect me a man who will who, 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 who will understand me for who I am but the most important thing was that it should be a man who loves God and who is gonna enhance my relationship with God that thing I was very clear about I didn't want a man who will come into my life and mess up my relationship with God so I had three things that I envisage about you know a man who be in my life and whom I will spend the rest of my life with. I didn't have, listen, I didn't have a thought that maybe one day this man will be unfaithful to me. One day this man will be uh, disrespectful to me. One day this man, you know, will not be in my life, maybe divorcing me or, or anything. I just had clarity of mind that it's going to be a man with whom I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Amen. And so is the type of relationship, I don't know if many of you can relate, is the type of relationship that God anticipated with us as humankind. Hallelujah. However, the basis of that relationship being strong, being sustained, and fulfilling that ultimate vision that God had was obedience. It is clear as we read in the book of Genesis right now that after God had created everything and man himself, he thought it's important that he wants Adam. He put him down to say, listen, be warned that in this garden of Eden, there's a specific tree and it's at the center of the garden so that you don't doubt, you are not confused as to which tree is it. God explained this tree, its position and what would happen if Adam, you know, takes off the fruit from this tree. And all that God was saying it was, was to say, obey me. Obey me. Heed my instruction because with that you'll have eternal life. Because otherwise God says, if you eat of this tree, you're going to be what? You're going to be doomed. You're going to die. But that was not God's initial intention about us as mankind. He wanted us to have eternal life. And as a clear example of a process or a point where actually man disobeyed God, starting with Adam himself, because as you read past that instruction, we hear of the snake coming to deceive mankind and, and leading them to disobeying God. And as we drive through the word of God in the book of Samuel, as we have just read now, we have a typical example of somebody that God put in authority. God put Saul in authority to lead his people. And all that God wanted for Saul to do was to obey him. And in this specific example, there was a situation of the Amalekites that God wanted to deal with them so that his will and his purpose for his people be accomplished. And therefore, he instructed Saul to actually kill everyone, everything about the Amalekites. As we hear through the prophet Samuel, the Bible says, Now be sure that you obey him. Here is his commandment to you. I have decided to settle accounts with the nation of Amalekites for refusing. What did they do? They refused to help and to support the children of Israel when they were leaving Egypt. And we know 
the nation of Israel, God had a purpose for them. God had, had, had an intention for them to go into, into the promised land. And along the line, there were nations that they had to go through. But particularly the Amalekites, when they had an opportunity to help the Israel, Israelites, the Bible says they, they did just the opposite. They fought against the nation of Israel. And that didn't go down well with God. And now it was the time that God settles accounts with, with, with that uh, uh, nation. And he says, now go and completely destroy the entire Amalek nation. So men, women, it was right clear. Uh, everyone, children, everything that they owned, they, they had to be vanished. But let's hear what the Bible then says about Saul. Verse 4, Saul mobilized his army at that place, Telaim. There were 200,000 troops in addition to 10,000 men from Judah. The Amalekites were camped in the valley below them. Saul sent a message to uh, Canaanites telling them to get out from among the Amalekites or else they will die with them. For you were kind to the people of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. He explained. So the Kenites packed up and left. So in the very first instance, after hearing the instruction uh, from the men of God or from the prophet that was sent by God, we hear that actually Saul obeyed. Because we hear that he galvanized, he took everyone into the army so that they exercise or they execute the, the instruction or the commandment of God. So we would, would want to see that uh, when, when the instruction came, Saul regarded God's authority. He didn't question Samuel to say, who are you? And to tell me all of this. He just took the word of God just as it is through his servant and did what was expected of him. However, that was unfortunately short-lived. As you read um, from, from verse 5, I mean from, from verse 7 to, 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 to verse 10, the Bible indicates there that instead of executing the commandment in its totality, 100%, Instead, what did Saul do? He killed everything else, but the Bible says he kept the king and he also kept the best of the cattle, the best of the animals, the fat ones, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the well-fed animals because he felt, no, we cannot uh, 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 kill this. We have to keep them to ourselves. But then what, that, what did that represent? Disobedience. Right there. Right there and there. Saul just decided to go off the mark. He changed the script. He changed God's commandment and did his own thing. And what we see now creeping in there is greed, isn't it? When he decided to keep the best to himself. But camouflaging that to say, we're going to sacrifice this to God. But God didn't say that. God didn't say, you know, Saul, as you go out, you'll actually come across the very fat of the animals, the best of them all, and you're going to keep them for me. No, God didn't say that. His commandment was very clear that you demolish, you kill everything. I mean, everything. Pride also came in there because what we see now with, with Saul having disregarded God's commandments, that grieved God. So what we see as even the Bible will say, never grieve the spirit of God. God was so grieved because of what Saul did, because of him not heeding fully to the commandment that he had been given. And it said in, in this version, as I read it, the Bible said, God even said, I am so sorry. I regret, I actually regret for making Saul king over my people. Imagine God saying that. Imagine God saying, 
you know, I've appointed you as pure. I've given you this gifting. And my expectation of you is that you run with it, but you decide to hold back. Or you are using this gift not to his glory, but to your own glory. And making God in that way, making God regret giving you that gift. God entrusting you with that gift. And the Bible says, God then sent Samuel to talk to Saul. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is obedience in the first place? Obedience is acknowledging God. With just this background I've given, what we learn is that obedience is about acknowledging God and His supremacy. It's about understanding that He is a God who is in control. Remember in the creation, He is actually the one who created everything and everyone, even Adam himself. And God is supreme. He rules over everything. So everything has to be under his commandment. So obedience, when we obey God, is acknowledging him and his authority. Secondly, it's about doing his will. Without question, without, without fail, God expects us to abide by his will. The fear of the Lord is also a reflection of obeying the Lord, of saying, Lord, I give you, you know, the honor and the, and, and, and the glory because you are worthy of all that. Obedience is about just doing it. Just doing what God says, basically pleasing him and honoring him and his word. And so what we see, instead of Saul doing all of that, we hear that Pride was in the, in, 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 at play here in Saul. He even went to a point of lying. Have you experienced a time when the Spirit of the Lord, you know, puts something in you to say, just give Spew a call? God speaks to us that way. That out of the blue, you would have somebody coming into your mind and you have this edge to call this person, to reach out. Basically, that edge is saying, reach out to this person. You may not know everything that they may be going through, but the Spirit of the Lord will say, just do it. Just pick up a call. And at times, if not most times, the tendency is to do what? Postpone. The minute you postpone is actually disobedience. And when you are disobedient, you're actually putting yourself right in the back foot. Have you experienced that? Like we see with Saul, when the prophet came and confronted him about disobeying God, Saul started saying, uh, 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 but I kept everything for the Lord and uh, my people wanted me, you know, to do this and this. And all that he was doing is lying. That's what disobedience does to us. When God asks you to do something, Mom says, say, hug this sister next to you. And Ubukonba, I actually don't know her. But did God say, hug only those you know? Did God say that? No. When God says, love your brother and your sister as you love yourself, is there two ways about it? Is there two ways about it? No. It's a clear commandment. Like Jesus says, I command you to love the Lord your God and to love your brothers and sisters. And in that way, you're obeying the Father. Hallelujah. But as human beings, we can be so choosy, isn't it? And Gomba, you know, Dimba. Ne? My spirit just doesn't connect. And say that perhaps that's true. Your spirit doesn't connect. So pray to God about it. Ask God about it. And perhaps say, Lord, I'll do it. But I pray that you help me to understand why am I feeling this way? Is it me? Is it my will? Is it my pride? Is it my disobedience or what? 
And because God is faithful, He will reveal it all to you. But the biggest favor that we can actually do is, is, is obeying the word of the Lord. Here is another lesson that we, we get from Saul, from his disobedience. It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep and oxen, Saul admitted. But they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord your God. Yamba, he's not saying the Lord my God. He's saying your God. That's what disobedience do. When a parent speaks to you and, and you, you tend to say, and let's say it's not your parent. Ne? Say, Angom Zaluang, your God. Or even if it's your parent and you say, that's your God. And in Genimna, it's your own choice when children are disobedient to their parents. So Saul says, your God. And we have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, stop. Listen to what the Lord told me last night. That's what I was saying, that when we start disobeying, we, 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 we just get ourselves right into the back foot. And lying just comes out of us. Camouflaging, defending the situation just come easily for us. And in that process, we even disregard just listening. When somebody corrects you, have you heard that? That as a person, as human beings, we can easily say, no, but so and so and so and so, this and so, this has happened. Uh, but, you know, I didn't have much time, but, 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 and giving all sorts of excuses. That's what exactly Saul did. That instead of repenting, instead of saying, okay, let me hear you, let me understand. And he admitted, remember? He did admit, but instead of taking that feather to say, I repent, I acknowledge that I didn't do exactly what God instructed me to do, I repent. Repentance, by the way, is actually when you confess that you are serious about and, and taking accountability about, uh, 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 over your actions. And not only taking accountability, but taking a different turn. That means you are changing your behavior. You are remorseful for what you have done. Amen? Unfortunately, Saul didn't do that. Think about us. When God will speak to you and say, forgive your mother. There are experiences, there are things that we have experienced with our parents or family members where they've hurt us so much. Where they've hurt us so much that, you know, you cannot even bring yourself to loving them like you used to before. But because you are children of God, God is a God who forgives. Amen. And therefore, he expects us to forgive. Amen. When the Bible says, forgive those who trespass against you, isn't it? Because God has forgiven us. And God will send his spirit and say, mm, forgive her. She brushed you, you know, in a wrong way. She talked to you in a wrong way. She did one, two, three, and you just didn't like it. And that had you to the core. And forgiving is just not possible. With, with your own might and understanding as a human being. What do you do when God says, stay away from something? Don't go there. You know, there are times that if I speak about myself, the experiences that I've had, God speaking to me, giving me instruction. One of the recent examples that I've experienced, when God says, just stay away from Facebook. To stay away from Facebook. You know how addictive that thing can be? Social media. You know? Or am I the only sinner? Huh? You know, social, social media gives you that edge, but I must post this. You know, I must tell them that, you know, this and this is happening. Sila pangoku. You know? That edge, you just want to be there 
be there. If you are not posting, ufuna zong indaba. It's good to be updated, isn't it? But at the same time, you wonder how fruitful this is, Mar. Eh? And so this one day, God said, my gosh. And as I listened, God was saying, actually, you are making this an idol. You are giving this the precious time that you could spend with me as your God. The precious time that you could give to your children, that you can attend to other important things that I want you to attend to. Confession time. Yavu, your mom says, but you like my posts. She, she, she gets in and likes my posts. And I listen to God and I'm like, oh wow. And as I, as I took that decision to say, I will not just go in there for the sake of being on social media. I'm going to obey God. And I tell you, as I started doing that, I find myself changing how I prioritize my day and my time. And in that space, I started hearing God speaking clearly to me. Because by the way, as this year started, I said, Lord, I want to be on a different trajectory with my life. Most of you know I resigned from my work and all that. And this year was then to be a new path for my life. And therefore God was saying, come here then. If you want a new path and you have a clear direction about your life from here onwards, you need to obey, you need to sit by my feet and listen to me as God. And even if that time, I don't have to, you know, it's not necessarily a time where I can pray, you know, um, and I want to post something. God will say, no, don't post it. Because you know what? God sees our hearts. If you you track most of the posts, we are boasting on social media. We are boasting. That's another way where our pride comes out. There's nothing wrong to to share good things, no. But at times, if not most times, the the, the motives that we post on social media, you find that it's about boasting. Even about the blessings that God has given you, it's as if you're saying, I'm better, God has blessed me better. It's my year of favor. As if it's not your year of favor, indirectly. So there are things that God will tell you to stay away from. Hallelujah. There are things that God will just say, shut up. Because we always want to, yep, 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 yep. And missing the mark. And this I always say to my children, you know, very vocal. You know, they want to tell you, you know, one, two, three, and four and five. But mommy, but mommy. And I say, listen. And that's how God deals with us. There are times when God will tell you, then you can say something. Hallelujah. God requires total obedience from us. He doesn't want sacrifice. Because as the scripture says, when Samuel spoke to Saul, to say, I hear you, you explaining this, you are defending your action, and you think that sacrifice will please God. It will not please God because it's a defiled sacrifice. It's a second best because God said you, you destroy everything because remember the sin that the Amalekites uh, 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 committed before the Lord. So God wouldn't want to accept anything from them as a sacrifice no matter how best it is as a sheep or oxen god didn't want it so with with that god is saying obedience is better than sacrifice because be aware then that you don't say if god guides you when it let's say it comes to offering you have a 20 rand in your bag and you say no i'll give five rand But God says, give that 20 bucks. 
if you give that, that five rand, so it's a sacrifice. And it's actually a defiled sacrifice because it's not what God commanded you to do. Amen. So what does obedience do when we actually do exactly what God expects us to do? Now it shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your heads, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bow. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be de defeated before your face. And they shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Amen. Let's, let's take it till they... So in essence, when you read, as you hear from verse 1 to verse 14, what we hear is God's blessings were actually already there. God's blessings were actually guaranteed for his nation, even for us as his people today. That even from the very onset when God created us, he created us as his beloved, isn't it? And therefore he has in store blessings upon blessings for us. But what we learn from this scripture is that obedience is actually the key to us accessing those blessings. So it simply means if we don't obey, if we don't do what God wants us to do, we are the ones who are locking our own blessings up. We are the ones who are delaying ourselves. We are the ones who are actually putting a curse on our crops, on our land, because when the Bible says, when you obey, when you just do what I want you to do, what will happen? Your crops will be blessed. You shall have plenty. You shall have food. You shall have abundance of everything that you need. So we must therefore put it to recognition that it's on us. Because the Bible clearly says, if you fully obey, not 50% obedience, not 70%, for that matter, not 99.9 point whatever. As long as it's not 100% full obedience, we are the ones who are holding our own blessings back. So blessings do that. They unlock, uh, I mean, obedience unlock, unlocks God's blessings over our lives. Obedience guarantees a fulfilled relationship. Remember what I said, God created us to have a, 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 a beautiful relationship with us. So if we don't obey, we're actually putting a curse between us and, and the Lord. We're, we're always at a distance and operating in, in, a, in, a, in a disadvantaged manner. And obedience guarantees a fulfilled purpose and destiny. Guess what? What happened to Saul? When Saul diso disobeyed God and God confronted him through his prophet God says to him you're going to die you're not gonna stay on the throne for long I'm actually going to replace you there's one who's better than you there's one who's gonna actually obey me than you have isn't it sad isn't it sad because God purposed for Saul to be king over Israel. Ne? And I want to believe that it would up until he dies. But Saul himself cut short fulfilling God's purpose for his life. Saul shortcut 
his own destiny. And as much as he continued to live when David came on board, but he was already at a disadvantage point. He was banished before the Lord. And that's not what you want. That you serve God from a second best point, from a disadvantage point, and you actually don't ever fulfill his purpose. That's why you find at times people later in their years, they regret they look back to say, I was this person, I was going to go far, I was going to achieve that, na, 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 na. But there's something along the way in their lives that when they, they, were, they, were, they were flourishing in their lives, in their giftings, in whatever sphere, they tended to forget God. They tended to be disobedient to God and unawares short-circuiting their own purpose. There are people who are still perhaps musicians or pastors or whatever different fields that you'll find them, but you find that they're not operating at their best because somewhere, somehow, they, they disobeyed God. And lo and behold, they may still have all the riches. They may still have all, you know, the possessions, but those possessions are not in the space where they are pleasing to God. So God is warning us today that if we are to experience all his blessings, all that we need to do is to trust and obey. If we are to keep being the image of God, if we are to succeed in life, if we are to live eternal life with God, we must walk in love, in obedience. We must fully surrender our lives to God and have the utmost intimacy with God. That's how much God loves us. If God didn't love us, He wouldn't speak to us. He would leave us in our own ways, in our own paths. Let's pray. May we stand and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We ask of thee to be our God. We ask of thee to help us and be true to you and be true to your word, be true to who you want us to be. And that is obedient children, loving you, O oh God, and fearing you and acknowledging you, acknowledging you as our God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, forgive us where we fall short. Forgive us, O oh God that we not be like Saul, that when you looked upon him, after him being disobedient, that you regretted having called him to be king over Israel, that you rejected him even up to eternity. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that forgive us. We pray for your mercy. We pray for your kindness. We pray still for your spirit to continue speaking to us. Lord and Lord, that we make every opportunity to, to, be, to hasten to your word and do that which you want us to do. Father, all that you require of us in obeying you is just to trust you. Just to trust you because you will never lead us astray, O oh God. Father, your direction and the path that you take us through are for our own good, are for our own blissful eternity. For you said in your word, I know the plans that I have for you. There are plans to prosper you. There are plans not to harm you. Father, your blessings are assured upon our lives. Your promises are yes and amen, as your word says. All that you therefore require of us is to be obedient to you, O God. Is to treasure you, O God, over everything else. Because your word says... Pride is like witchcraft. Father, may we, not, may we not be found to have pride because the Bible says pride is like witchcraft. The Bible says rebellion and stubbornness is, 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 is like idolatry where we, we start with our disobedience, with our stubbornness, where we start idolizing the things that we prefer over 
you as our God and over the things that you instruct us, the commandments that you give us. We pray, Lord. We pray, help us in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may be upon us and guide us as we enter into this new week, into obeying God and giving him preeminence in our lives. For, O oh God, as we do that, you are faithful to come through for us. And, Lord, that we experience all the blessings that you have in store for us, that we may eat from the abundance of your hands, O oh God. In Jesus' name, you have called us to life and life in its full abundance, O oh God. And, Lord, we want to pray that help us to experience that. In Jesus' name, bless your people. May your face shine upon them. Oh God, may your love cover them. May your spirit keep on resonating your word in them, oh God, as we enter into this week. And Heavenly Father, may you shield them from all harm in the mighty name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus be a covering around them. And your fire, oh God, that, oh God, chase away the temptation that comes from the enemy, making us to be disobedient to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for the power that is in us, oh God. The Bible says is the same power that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead with. And that's the power we'll be able to resist the enemy and resist being disobedient to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and I thank you so much. Amen. God bless you, Bazalan. We thank you for listening to today's messages. For more information about Destined for Greatness Ministry, as well as additional resources, visit us on our website at dfgministry.org.za. Bless you.